Let's get to our Mike Everett. Looking at the forecast and the cold and the wet weather that's coming in, what's happening? Hi, Joyce. The only thing that I picked up from all of that data was three and a half minutes of extra daylight every day. Lovely. Uh, you know what? I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a moment. Just remember that on Sunday morning, you get to play that fun game called which thing automatically sprung forward and which one do you have to manually set yourself? For me, it's the stove, the car, and my watch. Otherwise, it looks like everything's going to just set us forward, putting that sunset at 7, 12 p.m on Sunday night. So just to put it into perspective here, some of us benefit more than others. Obviously, at your, if you're at the equator, you're going time change. What time change? Folks down towards Florida, they get about 40 minutes of extra daylight in March, but look what we get out of the deal. 100 minutes. So as the days get longer, they will also theoretically get warmer as well. Take a look outside right now. You know what? Check this out. A late day rally by the sun trying to light up the waterfront and temperatures sitting in the low 50s. We got ourselves up to about 52, 53 degrees today. Wind coming in lightly from the southeast about seven miles an hour as a warm front passes through tonight and barometric pressure sitting falling currently at 3022. So here's what we're looking at. That barometric pressure is falling for a very solid reason. We've got an active pattern ahead. It's going to bring a stormy Saturday for starters. In fact, folks along the coast could be seeing some heavy rain and some thunder and lightning. I'll show you that in a moment. Weather system moves in on Monday and Tuesday, and that's when we're looking at the potential for some minor river flooding and some slide concerns. It's not going to be particularly heavy duty, but it is something to keep an eye on. More systems are likely later in the week. So yeah, nine days away from the start of spring, but winter saying, and we're not done yet. Take a look at this. Here's the Pacific Northwest. There's Washington. We got that warm front pushing through tonight. The cold front comes in behind it tomorrow. That will bring that rain. And then we're going to tap into that big plume of moisture on Monday. So take a look tonight about 1130. We're going to start to see some snow falling up into the, the northern Cascades, especially up towards Skagit and Whatcom County. Baker's going to do well. Vancouver Island's going to pick up some new snow in the upper elevations. Tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. We start to see those showers pushing in along the coast. And then by the time we get to about 3:30 in the afternoon, everyone involved. We will see bands of periodically heavy rain across the Puget Sound and this is the instability that we're watching where we could see that thunderstorm potential out towards the coast there. No big deal, but it could be interesting if you hear the rumbling of thunder. Take a look at 6 p.m. on Saturday. Yep, we're all fully involved. We will see steady rain basically all the way up and down the Puget Sound. Then we see the low pass through here and that'll taper off to showers on Sunday, but it's going to bring some much needed snow basically for everybody else. Things will quiet down at Baker and then we'll start to see some of that snow pushing into the Central Cascades. Sunday, we take a bit of a break. This is 10 p.m. And then Monday, next delivery pushes in there. This is 1.30 in the afternoon, and we are expecting some heavier rain there. You see those dark colors. That means we're going to be picking up well over an inch in some spots. So if we pick up some rain tomorrow, no big deal, unless, of course, you're out near the coast. But it saturates the ground so that when that second system moves through on Monday, we could be looking at some slide potential. We're going to keep a very close eye on that. Take a look at snow levels. The one thing that I'm really enjoying about this is even though it will pop up to about 4,500 on Tuesday, we're not going to see that crazy eight, 9,000 feet like we did last time. So the potential for rain on snow is considerably lower. If you're going to be a weekend warrior, you're going to do great, especially as we go into the second half of the weekend, picking up between 6 and 12 inches of new snow in the mountains. Seven day forecast shows temperatures staying warm. In fact, we'll take a run at 60 tomorrow, but the big story is the rain. It's going to stick with us pretty much all through the week.